Pregnancy, as I said, is a very difficult situation. It's an anabolic condition. And during this time, the mother faces different complications. And today, we'll be discussing about the different complications, what are the causes of these complications, and how do the mother get relief? How can we get her relief from these complications during pregnancy? So, let us start. Welcome to Educators, myself Manjushta Chatterjee. Let us move on to the discussion of today's video. Now, what are the different uh, signs of pregnancy that is uh, generally seen? First is dizziness, like it's very common during pregnancy. Along with that, dizziness is accompanied with nausea, mood swings, which are very common, breast tenderness, there is fatigue and tiredness. The reason be behind the fatigue and tiredness, I told you in the previous uh, video. Along with that, there is increased sensitivity to smell, frequent in urination, but the most important is which is uh, which you need to be very uh, careful about is a missed period that is if you miss a period then you must check whether you are pregnant or not so these are the different signs which are mainly due to the different hormonal changes that takes place in our body as I told you in the previous video that our body during this period are accompanied or they move or they go through different kind of changes. Hormonal changes are very common during this time which are related to these kind of uh, different problems which is mainly uh, started with a missed period which is very common. Now, the first thing that uh, most of the pregnant women or the pregnant lady, uh, they suffer from is a name which is known as a morning sickness. Now, now over, uh, what we can say is that though the name uh, is morning sickness, but this sickness is not only... Uh, a morning uh, takes place in the morning it's most commonly commonly done or commonly uh, the uh, pregnant women they suffer during the morning but it is now a misleading name or we can say that it's the uh, it's one of the unpleasant side effect of pregnancy that can uh, be felt by the pregnant women throughout the day and they can uh, they can feel sick throughout the day, not only in the morning. And moreover, 80% of the uh, pregnant women, they suffer from this uh, cause that is the morning sickness. Now, why this morning sickness uh, happens? It can be due to the change in the pregnancy hormones which uh, which are very common during pregnancy like the estrogen progesterone the changes uh, uh, in these hormone levels these are the main cause of this morning sickness this can be a reason there can be a reduced blood sugar it is said to be one of the reason of the morning sickness or there can be as i told you there uh, the pregnant women they have the um, excessive uh, uh, smell they are prone to excessive smelling of something or uh, everything is a foul smell to them. So any kind of food smell, they are uh, they, the morning sickness can be a reason for that because that triggers their nauseatic feeling and that triggers their vomiting. Or if the, uh, the pregnant woman has taken too much spicy food or fatty food. Because as I told you that uh, in the abdominal changes in the previous uh, video. That due to the reason of the enlarging uh, 
fetus on the uterus what happens each and every organ of other organs of a body are compromised and the digestion is also a little bit uh, you know the digestion also uh, are troubles the hormones the different digestive juices are also at trouble during this time so if the pregnant woman is taking too much spicy food too much fatty foods the the uh, you know the digestive time it increases and uh, they are uh, not being properly digested in the body which can lead to acidity and actually it can triggers this mo uh, the morning sickness sometimes what happens if the person is having multiple babies and uh, the pregnancy levels the hormone uh, levels the pregnancy hormone levels they are increased uh, which can also increase the num the nauseatic feeling and any kind of negative th uh, thoughts anxiety stress that can also induces vomiting now when does the morning sickness start like when can a pregnant woman start with this morning sickness generally at the beginning of the pregnancy uh, sometimes this morning sickness is treated as the first indication of the pregnancy missed period is definitely one of the indication of pregnancy along with that this nauseatic feeling dizziness is one of another uh, you know the complications or one of the first indications of pregnancy it can uh, takes place between the conception and the second trimester and uh, sometimes it can also not start uh, during the second uh, trimester even now uh, what we should do to you know uh, if a morning sickness is there we can't stop it right but definitely we can avoid it or we can lower the triggerness so we can uh, you know control the triggers so what we can do uh, we must avoid those foods which triggers the nausea definitely now it is uh, said that during pregnancy it is always better to give frequent meal but small meal and if if the person is suppose has the habit of the pregnant woman has the habit of going to bed at suppose 10:30 in the night so she must complete her, her dinner by 8:30 so so that the proper digestion takes place like after eating and that to eating some spicy food fatty food you should not go to sleep it is not good for anybody but especially for the pregnancy because the hormones the different digestive juices cannot work uh, under pressure right and that is a pressure condition what we can say so during the, uh, during this time so that gap must be maintained light food less spicy food should be given uh, definitely if the person is suffering from too much of morning sickness then intravenous fluids can be given that's an option but we need to increase the fluid consumption as i told you in the previous uh, video as well that fluid is a very important factor during pregnancy so fluid in uh, construction fluid uh, um, inclusion is very important along with some vitamin b6 that is seen to be that is pyridoxin that is seen to be very good for the uh, treating of morning sickness and definitely pregnancy is such such a time where there is emotional stress is going on so i told you that it's a condition where a person uh, suffer a person is controlled by psychological physiological emotional environmental uh, causes and we need to support those causes too much so emotional stress we must control that we must try to keep the lady or keep her very happy during this time to avoid the triggers of the morning sickness now heartburn is another very common you know uh, cause of uh, cause no effect or complication during pregnancy we can say gastroesophageal reflux that happens actually if we can uh, see this picture we can understand a bit like see this is the over here we have the 
uterus and the enlarging uterus they are creating some abdominal pressure the increase they are increasing the abdominal pressure and bloating is there okay so what happens the I, as I told you, the relaxing muscles, they all, the relaxing muscles, they're all relaxed. The sphincters are loosed, loosened. The diaphragm, I, I showed you the picture in the previous video. The diaphragm is compromised up. So that is a condition where everything uh, is like relaxed by the pressure exerted by the enlarging uterus. So what happens the, if the digestion is not properly done, from the stomach, there is uh, acid reflux through the esophage, uh, esophagus and through the esophageal um, sphincter, which is at the relaxation, relaxed condition. And that causes the heartburn, like a feeling of burning sensation over here, like in the esophagus. And that is the gastroesophageal reflux, that is the heartburn. So, that can be a cause due to the changing hormones, as I said, uh, the, the loosening or the relaxation of the cardiac sphincter. Definitely, it's a cause of the growing fetus because the growing fetus to keep or to uh, give enough space for the growing fetus, enlarging uh, uh, fetus, we are actually uh, keeping everything under pressure. An unhealthy lifestyle that is uh, in, improper kind of food, improper habits of improper sleeping habits rather, it can cause and definitely gastric problem. So what we can, how we can prevent because we need to help these uh, lady during this time, right? So we, again, fluids are very important options. Stress relievers, we must not give them stress because stress can also induce uh, you know acidity and all smaller portions healthy bits smaller bits smaller portions too much tight fitted clothes no we have to keep the person relaxed both physically and psychologically any food which is too much fried too much spicy uh, gas produced uh, production too much causing flatulence those should be avoided any kind of medication before giving uh, we should know about it and without doctors consult we must not give any kind of medication to a pregnant woman coming next is Another uh, very important thing that is seen is the swelling of feet. That it, there's an edema kind of a thing that is very common during pregnancy. And uh, it is mainly due to the increasing hydrostatic uh, pressure which is coming out of the capillary and in the interstitial fluid fluid or the interstitial spaces it is coming out of that okay so the hydrostatic pressure it is pulling out the interstitial fluid towards the interstitial uh, uh, sorry the spaces and uh, that that actually uh, due, due to this capillary microcirculation that happens the osmotic pressure uh, decreases and the hydrostatic pressure that increases what happens the fluid accumulate uh, in the tissues feet ankles legs because due to gravitational pull everything comes down so everything uh, mostly it is in the feet ankles legs making them swell and looks like a puffy thing a condition called the edema face hands also swell and very common during the third trimester this is the physiological edema so this is a physiological help that we can do we can keep some uh, pillows under her feet so that the the pain or the uh, swelling can be controlled uh, not only in congestive heart failure liver cirrhosis and renal diseases but during pregnancy the hydro uh, hydrostatic pressure 
it is increased it can be also related during abnormal uh, due to abnormal increase in the blood volume if the person or the uh, pregnant women is taking excessive sodium or caffeine hormonal change is the is constant in every slide hormonal change will be constant as i told in the previous video also there are chances of lower potassium level hypokalemia hyponatremia i told about that and presence of high uric acid levels if that that is there that the proper uh, the kidney cannot function well and the uric acid level is also very high potassium levels are low and blood volumes is very uh, you know uh, it is increasing and there is excessive like over here the sodium retention is there so that causes the fluid accumulation in the tissues because of the increase of the hydrotic hyd uh, hydrostatic pressure and the decrease of the osmotic pressure where the water is driven outwards in the interstitial the fluid the interstitial fluid comes out in the interstitial spaces and there is swelling there is pitting you can if you pit there is some dip like a hole kind of a thing now the weight gain which is uh, very important because pregnancy will be associated definitely with weight gain but what happens if a, a pregnant woman is already obese morbid obese what will happen to those so there will be also weight gain so how much weight gain will be there so generally if the bmi is lesser than uh, 18.5 that means the mother is underweight a recommended total weight gain will be between 12.5 to 18 kg that's the normal if the bmi is in between the normal weight range that is 18.5 to 24.9 is the bmi then the weight gain will be 11.5 to 16 kg 25.25 to 29 that is overweight 7 to 11 kg and if the mother is obese then 5 to 9 kg of weight gain will be there in case of a mother who is obese now what are the risk of obesity during pregnancy there are 3 3 to 10 times higher risk of preeclampsia what is it we will be learning in the next slide and cardiovascular diseases it is seen that uh, like one in every four women are obese okay and uh, there are also risk of gestational diabetes gestational diabetes what are the impacts of on the off screen uh, of spring that is the baby will be smaller there can be a chance of preterm delivery still birth there can be obstructive airway diseases impaired glucose tolerance that can related to relate to gestational diabetes and the cardiovascular disease and even mental health illnesses can be there so what we need to do we need to control this obesity before pregnancy by reaching the bmi and improving the fertility for that we need to promote weight loss in a proper way exercise proper vitamins for conceptions and fertility and to regulate the menstrual cycle and the hormones if needed supplementations is required now the preeclampsia that i was talking about what is it it is a progressive disorder basically what happens it generally occurs at the after the 20 weeks during pregnancy it is seen that 8 to 10% of pregnancies in india is affected by preeclampsia mainly hypertension in pregnancy is this preeclampsia condition that is pregnancy induced hypertension which is the cause of 14% maternal death 
and 10 to 20 percent of 25 percent of infant mortality. How can you understand that you are suffering from this? Headaches will be there which will not go away. That means the consistent headaches. There will be belly, a pain in the upper belly and shoulders, swelling because there will be water retentions. That means sodium retentions, water retentions will be there. Sudden weight gain, nausea, vomiting which is common but that feeling sick will be consistent. Okay. Breathing trouble again which is a common sign but that will be consistent. Breathlessness will be there. Along with that there will be change in vision which is very com common that there will be flashing lights, blurring of the vision which will help you to understand whether it's a preeclampsia or not. What are the hazards to mother? There can be placental abruption, organ damage, death, Preeclampsia can uh, lead to seizures that is eclampsia and death. High risk of cardiovascular diseases after that stroke or cerebral bleeding. In case of baby, the baby can be of low birth weight, preterm delivery, death is also there. And of course higher risk of cardiovascular diseases. So preeclampsia is a condition which we need to control if a mother is suffering from this kind of a condition. We need, to re we need to hold on the sodium. We need to check the water retention. We need to control the hypertension of the mother. Gestational diabetes is very common during pregnancy now. It is a particular Diabetes that occurs or that develops during the gestation period that is the pregnancy period. What can be the cause of this? That food produces glucose in the bloodstream. Pancreas secretes insulin which moves glucose from the bloodstream to the energy. We know that. But this pregnancy, during pregnancy what happens? As I said that the placental hormones what happens? They, they actually weaken the impact of insulin. So when the insulin is weakened, the uptick of the blood sugar level is lowered. When the uptick of the blood sugar level is lowered, hence the blood sugar level will increase. And sometimes insufficient insulin is also produced. So gestational diabetes is a particular cause which takes place during the gestation period that is the pregnancy period where the either the formed insulin is very much weakened, the impact is weakened by the placental hormones or there is insufficient insulin production due to the effect of the enlarging uterus. So what can happen? The risk on the mom, it can definitely lead to preeclampsia, premature birth and if not treated, diabetes mellitus, gestational diabetes mellitus, GDM can develop type 2 diabetes after delivery. In case of child, high birth weight, low glucose level, jaundice and also respiratory distress. How can we treat it? Now proper monitoring is very much important with a healthy breakfast that is required for the mother and taking right carbohydrate. We need to reduce the stress. So in that case proper sleeping and proper yoga that is uh, recommended by the doctor is suggested. Cinnamon tea is good because it contains a lot of antioxidant so that can also help and if any medication is, uh, is prescribed we must be taking that as well. Pika. Pika is the consumption of non-food items. 
Now, what we when we call about non-food items, what is that? Craving of non-food items. Like who loves to eat clay, chalks, stones, charcoal, dirt? Okay, so so it is generally it is said that pika during pregnancy is due to some uh, deficiencies of the micronutrients that the pregnant women is having that habit of taking that common you know food uh, having that uh, you know tendency or craving towards cigarette ashes maybe plasters all these things the list is whole list is given here and if you know other things you can also comment me below but these are not good for the mother neither for the child because it can lead to different nutritional deficiencies gi tract problem poisoning dental complications and weight gain along with that sometimes it can lead to certain the mothers are in habit of taking certain things which can even lead to fetal hemolytic anemia and it is seen that the prevalence of anemia was more 15 percent more in women with pika and six percent without it so the prevalence is almost double during pika if the person is having all these things you know we can't control the other factors as well now food aversions and food cravings are certain things the pika is one of the uh, bad effect of food cravings like uh, food cravings sometimes is also good like they are more uh, you know they like to have more chocolates maybe more uh, milk items maybe uh, ice creams all these things and they have as i told that they have a greater sensibility uh, sensitivity to their smell or taste so too much you know um, smelly things they don't like so they 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 have aversion towards aversion towards uh, you know fish eggs maybe garlic which are actually good for them uh, maybe uh, sometimes coffees uh, meat you know milk raw milk they have certain aversions towards that so we need to supply the nutrients we cannot cut it but we need to uh, get the same things from some other source so here i've just tried to uh, get some similar kind of photographs like though egg is you know the biological value is great of egg and fish but yes if the mother can't take egg them or it's a veg if the mother is a vegetarian then we have to give them from some other source like the peanuts the cereals the pulses the legumes etc meat fish uh, we have to give them from fruits milk if the mother can't take the raw milk calcium we have to be given in the form of some other things like milk products the mother can't can take milk products is definitely tea and coffee can be uh, skipped during pregnancy and it can be definitely uh, given by lemonades or fruit juices uh, any kind of sherbets sherbets is very good we can use herbs good herbs can be given to replace onion and garlic if the mother is having aversion towards it so pregnancy is a condition as i told you before also where the person or the women is completely controlled by the hormonal changes by the change of the uh, you know the growing fetus and we should be if we are the providers we should be uh, helping her to get through these uh, many weeks and get her a healthy motherhood and a healthy you know uh, lactation period and a healthy in infant so i hope you all like the videos uh, and uh, keep you know liking my video and don't forget to subscribe it if you have not subscribe it yet and put the bell icon for more notifications that's all for today thank you